Hey, welcome to the, today's webinar. Uh, I am Butch Zimar. I am the host of the webinar. And here I'm going to talk to you, why is healthcare such a problem? We're going to have a series of webinars that are related to this. I just thought this would be a good head start on what we're doing and um, maybe get some background on some things to make sure that uh, maybe you could change some things as an employer, as uh, an employee, or just somebody that's individually buying their own health insurance. Um, the first thing, though, is definitely knowing the system. Okay, there's so many things that are involved in the system, the healthcare system, from a delivery uh, standpoint, from the healthcare providers down to the patients, and then the uh, delivery mechanism from the employer side, providing the health insurance or those who are purchasing their own health insurance. Knowing how those faucets move, uh, move and what important role they have is, is going to make it better uh, when you're trying to navigate the healthcare uh, chain. The next thing is going to be know, knowing the claim process. So we're going to go through some, some examples of the claim process and some of the things that to look out for that maybe you didn't know before, uh, how the system is stacked against us, and we'll walk through that too. And then the last one is getting control of the expenses. or uh, claims. So these are definitely uh, three key components to what we're trying to do um, to navigate this healthcare system and why it's so expensive. Why do we not have control? Why do employers feel like they're trapped? They're passing on more costs. It seems like the end game, all we're doing is to offset the risk and the costs is by increasing deductibles, increasing co-pays, switching plans, maybe finding a new risk pool to start all over and then have it in a couple of years go back up. And so it's just this rat race that everybody gets in. And so let's talk about how the system is working. And this is more true for the small, mid-sized companies, depending on how you purchase the health plans. And then obviously the individual self-employed uh, individuals um, and families that are out there on their own trying to do it. And so let's walk through the system. And so um, the system is working exactly how it was intended to, to work. And so some people think it's broken. It's working exactly how they wanted it. And so um, how, how did that work out? And especially now with the Affordable Care Act, where things are going, it was called the Affordable Care Act. They never did anything to control expenses. And so we're going to walk through uh, some of that. So one of the first problems is definitely is hidden costs. So this the No Surprise Act um, that are supposed to have no surprise billing and whatnot and everything's supposed to be published. Not everybody's doing it yet. And so, and to figure out what those costs really mean, you call up a provider and say, how much is it for a certain procedure such as a hernia surgery? They're gonna provide you the full retail value or what they, they're billing their list bill, but that nobody ever pays that. And so what's the true cost? Nobody knows. It depends on your insurance and it has all these variables and nobody can really navigate the system. There are systems out there and employers could actually provide that as a benefit to their employees. Um, and then you could also do keyword searches in the search engine to kind of get a uh, estimated cost, you know, for all other services that outside of the healthcare industry, we do homework and due diligence to find out what's going on, but we never do it for healthcare. We assume uh, everything will work out. For years, your employer paid for everything. Uh, I'm sorry, your employer health plan paid for everything. And so nobody really second guessed anything. We abused the system. So we got like 60, 70 years of problems that developed over the years, and now we're paying for it. And we need to really know what's going on and having a good handle. You don't need to know everything. When claims come through, even for me personally, I always second guess it and say, well, is this the right cost? Is this the right thing? Uh, am I being billed for the right thing? We'll get to some of that, but there's definitely hidden costs. Um, the second thing is the incentives is actually to increase spending. And don't believe me, 
the Affordable Care Act came out with an MLR or medical loss ratio. The medical loss ratio was put in place to help basically crack the whip onto the insurance companies and how they're spending money. The issue is it was it actually gave them a tool to to make more money. And so the the prime example is uh, it came out with the general rule that things are covered at eighty percent, twenty percent. And so 80% was supposed to be for claims and 20% was operations. And so most insurance companies had to drop their operational costs down 50% or more in some cases. We were included in that. Our compensation had dropped through the floor. That's why some of us are moving to consultant fees because we're not getting paid enough anymore. And, and what we got dropped to hasn't changed in 10 years. That's an entirely different topic. There's compensation disclosures coming for that, but, but operations had to cut down. So what's next, right? And so how do you increase operational revenue so you could work with and create more money? And so uh, the best example is... is by if I had a thousand dollars that came in and 80% went for claims, that means 20% is operationals, right? So out of that $200, $200 is actually for operational expenses. But in order to increase the $200, we actually have to increase our 20%. So how do we do that? Well, create a financial incentive to increase it to $10,000. And now you just went from $200 to $2,000. So in order to increase this, they have to increase an incentive to spend more money in order to collect it. They are just the middle party, the insurance company, to media, uh, media claims or, or take money from one to give to another. And so they're the middle party, um, just like in a lot of places, like when you close on loans or, or whatever, there's a lot of places where there's somebody in the middle that is, um, is definitely uh, the middle person that, that move the money around. And that's what the insurance company is doing. And so for them to increase it, they have to increase their operation so their profits uh, in, in time um, increase, they have to increase the 20%. And so it's almost like if you had a bowl or a cup, and in order to get more, you have to get a bigger cup. And so it increased the cup. And so they created a system so that they could financially incentivize to actually increase the claims. And so it's, seems unreal in a lot of ways, but um, it's the truth. Um, they increase the opportunity to increase um, uh, the claims. And so prior to the Affordable Care Act, prior to the Affordable Care Act, you could actually buy an insurance plan for your college uh, graduate. And you could probably get under a hundred dollars per month and have most reasonable things that you would be able to get covered when you were buying private insurance. And so, um, so today, if you went on exchange with no financial help from mom or dad or from the uh, taxpayer subsidy, yeah, that average premium is closer to $350 a month, depending on where you live, what county you're in. And so we're talking about an increase, a huge increase in premium to cover a 22 or 24 or 26 year old out of college. Um, and it doesn't even drive itself because in this, you still have most likely on average a $2,000 deductible or higher, but your out of pocket nationwide is generally roughly $9,000, somewhere 8,700. And I think it's increased uh, or gonna be increasing the 9,100 or something, but um, $9,000 out of pocket for your 25 year old right out of college, right? And so they already have $100,000 in debt. 
whatever it might be. And then now if something were to occur, they're still paying $9,000 out of pocket. And so, so we just, I always call it the American way, um, the American way, increase out of pocket, increase premiums. There's gotta be a better solution. And it creates innovation. It creates that you have to come up hard or apart from the masses to actually start asking questions, getting answers that you're looking for so you can get everything taken care of. And so but we're going to move on to the next one is know how the claims are being processed. I'm not going to get into a whole lot of technicalities here, but there's a few things that are going on at claim time. And so one is prepayment. So some insurance companies prepay your claims in January. So they get out of the system by prepaying it. It doesn't matter. They process it. That's why some people are like, I want a specific carrier because they pay my claims well. Well, it's probably because they didn't know your name and they just prepaid it in January. Um, now, some of these smaller providers um, may not have received that prepayment, but they create an automated system behind that. Uh, they put an automated system behind that so that way um, they don't have to nickel and dime things. They just kind of push things through. It costs them money to hold up the claim in order for things to work. And so they might as well just push everything through. Um, and it makes sense to them. Uh, two, overbilling. I don't know the percentage, but this happens all the time, all the time. And so um, they purposely add things to the bill and you get an explanation of benefits that says, okay, this is what was billed. This is your network discount. This is what's going on, whatever. There's a whole list. We need a class in itself to go through an explanation of benefits. Otherwise, um, you know, it's very simple, but it's confusing when you first get it. And they just keep making it worse every year. So you really have to know what's going on on that claim. And because things are added all the time. And so um, if you don't know any better, you're writing checks. Just signing them off, sending them off, assuming that that's the bill. Um, and, and then some cases you're getting bills before they're sending the insurance company. Personally, I had a claim that uh, was trying to be billed to me. It was like 600 bucks or something. And uh, they just kept sending it to me. And so um, I, I kind of put it to the side where I'm busy, just like everybody else on this webinar is. And so, um, so when I finally got around to doing it, I called and I found out they never even submitted to the insurance company. And it's like, well, if I just wrote the check for $600, thankfully, I, I would have been able to pay it and not have any issues. Um, but some people out there can't. And then so I asked them why they didn't submit it. And they just said, oh, we just didn't do it. And so they billed me for two months, uh, expecting that I was going to pay for it at $600 and then um, not submit it to the insurance company. So then they submitted to the insurance company and my reconciled bill after the insurance company got involved was like 120 bucks. And so I saved $480 ish um, by hesitating to pay the claim and then calling and asking them about it. That's it. And so um, that's definitely um, uh, of the third option to watch claims. You don't need to be a rocket science. You don't need to do my job. You don't need to be in the healthcare industry, but you have to watch those claims. They come in, there's extra billing. There, uh, even insurance companies are balking at it too. Uh, we had personally one claim that the insurance company wouldn't pay. And I was trying to communicate and they said, we're billing them. We don't know why they're paying. The insurance company says, because it's an unauthorized code. And so I finally, after back and forth, I finally got them on a three-way call. And they said, the provider said, it is an authorized call, uh, but we made the code up. And so uh, we were like, you made the code up? Yeah. So they have a prefix of numbers. And I don't know coding, but they have a prefix of numbers that was related to another claim that was submitted that was paid for. And so they added a P at the end for professional. And so the P at the end for professionalism whatever that might have been, um, they claim they could bill extra for it. And the insurance company's like, uh, I don't think so. 
I don't think that's going to work. And so we had to reconcile that. Um, and they actually just accepted the previous payment underneath the prefix code as payment. And so the bill wasn't that much. It was less than 50 bucks, but it was still the whole principle of them making up a code and submitting it. You have to pay attention and um, save money. It doesn't cost a whole lot of time. If that's all you do is just kind of control things, know that you're spending more than you have to, and, and you want to scrutinize things a little bit more, and you're going to save hundreds of dollars initially, if not thousands, and it could reach the tens of thousands of dollars. All right. All right, so now we're going to talk about controlling expenses. Okay, how do we do that? We're in this wonderful healthcare system. Why? Why do we need to do this? And so one is there's an indirect way of saving money um, without utilizing the healthcare system. On the employer side, we can move to different product lines that could actually help you control some of those costs on individual and small group. And then in some cases, or a lot of cases, mid-sized companies are in the same boat. They don't see the claims, so they don't know how to control it. If um, you had workers' comp claims as an employer, uh, you would get a report on some degree and explaining that you're a higher risk in certain areas, so you need to control that and then reduce those claims. And so why are we not doing this for healthcare? Blows my mind. Okay, so how do we control expenses? All right, one is see where most of the spending is. Why? Because that's the first part. If you're spending more on copy paper or pens, you're going to find a new supplier, right? If you're overpaying at the pump, the gas pump, you're going to find a different gas station that possibly will charge less for the same gas. And so why, why are we not doing this for healthcare, right? And so and then we could combat it, right? So like in some cases, we've seen reports where ER visits are through the roof. So why, why are they through the roof, right? So let's educate the employees. You don't need to run to the emergency room for small little claims. Some people think you do. Some people wait until the sickness gets bad enough and they just go to the ER. Why? These are driving up costs because of the cost there. There's other solutions. You go to urgent care, you go to primary care, there's immediate care. There's so many different other solutions that you could to help control those costs by implementing programs. Um, number two, be proactive. So in other words, you could uh, be proactive in claims. You could go outside the box and find out and ask additional questions. One, to um, see if you even need it. Like it's a valid question. Just because your doctor recommends an MRI doesn't need, mean that you need it. But I'm not advocating, does not do it. I'm not a doctor and not giving medical advice. I'm just saying, ask enough questions so you feel comfortable to proceed or not. That's it. Same thing with medications. Doctor puts you on medications. You could ask for the alternative. The alternative is not taking medications, but maybe doing, change my lifestyle, right? We're, we're, we have American standard diet out there. Maybe we can modify it a little bit um, to not take the medication. Uh, I'm not advocating, again, to stop taking medications. I'm just saying that there's alternatives, right? Uh, so you could change lifestyles. And this is hard. This is hard. I'm not asking you to do that. I'm just saying that if it's bad enough, maybe somebody will change. Smoking, for example, right? So it's increasing health risk. Why wouldn't you change, right? And so um, there's so many different ways you could be proactive. You could ask for the over-the-counter medication versus the prescription drug because the prescription drug may be higher. But the opposite could be true. The generic drug that you buy as a, ph a pharmaceutical med at the pharmacy may be less than the over-the-counter medication. You have to do some homework. I know it's a pain. I know it's extra work. You already have your desk full. But you could bring in tools that will help you with it and minimize the time. You can have advocates. So like employers, you have brokers or consultants such as myself. And there's many in the industry like me. You could also 
uh, bring in medical management companies to help manage some of those claims for your employees. You pay for the services of the employer, it's no cost to you as the employee. And so those are some incentives. Uh, doctor visits. Just because you have a cold doesn't necessarily mean you need to go to the doctor. Um, COVID uh, era in the last couple of years have been a validation of this. We're not running to the doctor unless you're actually truly sick. And so now we we're, look at home remedies. Um, which is the old school way is what I call it. Well, can we find out ways we can control the expense now and control our health now or control it in-house before going out and spending the money? And so those are definitely uh, two key components. And having access to claim data as an employer to help analyze that cost. As an employee or an individual purchasing your health insurance, it's harder to do this. It really is. But there are some steps. You could talk about the deductibles, um, where to buy it. You don't have to buy it with the Affordable Care Act. Yes, the employer mandate's still there that you have to buy it, but the penalty is zero at this point. Uh, it was zeroed out by the Trump administration. Will the Biden administration put it back up? I have no idea. And we don't know for what the future is going to hold. But those are some of the things that um, need to be looked at um, so you could see what other ways you control cost. Uh, you have to start thinking outside the box and start getting ahead. And so these were just some ways why the healthcare um, system is such a problem. There were some talking points on what we were looking at to um, control those costs and what you could do individually as an employer or as an employee. And so uh, if you need any further discussion on this or need any assistance from us, don't hesitate to contact us. I appreciate you guys spending a little bit of time throughout uh, your workday to join me on this webinar. And I appreciate it and see you in the next one.